We are live in Studio B with your day-to-day -day BYU sports play-by-play. -play. I'm Spencer Linton, teamed up with the esteemed Dave McCann. And joining us now to preview BYU men's basketball on a game day is the new assistant coach, Colin Terry. Welcome to BYU Sports Nation, officially in Studio B for the first time. Yeah, this place is incredible. Like, I, did, I, I didn't know where this was. I've seen it on TV before. But it's a, it's a really great studio situation that we have here at BYU. We, we know you walked over from your office, <laughs> but how did you get here to BYU? What, what road led to this moment where the three of us are together for you? Well, well how much time do you have? Because <laughs> I, 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 uh, my, my journey has been very, very unique. Yeah. I think everybody has, you know, coaching basketball is, uh, is a dream job, I think, for a lot of people. And so we have all these different paths, but I think the long and the short of it is, is that I used to be a financial advisor. Um, I, I, I did my master's in that and focused on going that path, but I always really wanted to coach. Um, I was lucky enough to be a, a redshirt walk-on at the University of Utah on the Final Four team for Coach Majerus, so had that experience and then went on my mission and then um, you know, became a financial advisor, but I always wanted to get into coaching. And uh, one of my teammates at the University of Utah who had guard every day in practice was Andre Miller. Wow. And it's quick, quick funny story, but was living in Phoenix. I got invited to go to a Suns game. I had no idea who they were playing. They ended up being playing the Denver Nuggets. Andre reconnected with him. He invited me to Denver, and George Carl was the head coach. And uh, I, got, I was the only non-Nuggets person there at practice came up to me, he was probably like, who the heck is this guy and why is he at my <laughs> practice right now? And after talking to him for five minutes, he goes, hey, do you want to come to this coaches only meeting? Uh, and I was like, heck yeah, I'd love to. So I ended up kind of being a fly on a wall and hanging out the last two months of the season and the playoffs and had all access. And that was kind of my foot into the door that led to kind of where I'm at right now. Isn't so, it interesting that wow. a financial advisor <laughs> has prepared you to be a basketball coach in the world of NIL. <laughs> there you go. There you go. I, I didn't even it. think about that until yeah. now. Yeah, so. I can hear it now. Set the screen and don't forget to do your taxes. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Colin Terry is with us on BYU Sports Nation. Okay, I want to dive in a little bit more into the ties there because Cody Feger obviously is a Majerus guy. He was around Rick Majerus basketball camps and, and that – it certainly inspired him in wanting to coach basketball as well. And then you mentioned George Carl, who has ties with Mark Pope as well. So mm -hmm. what's that like for you to have those similar connections in your own life to guys that are on the staff right now? Yeah, I mean, it's uh, – it, it, I just feel really lucky and blessed, you know, for, for the opportunity. I mean, the staff that we have here uh, from, you know, Coach Pope and then Coach Feger – Coach uh, Fennell, Coach Robinson, I mean, they're all very highly experienced, really great coaches in every aspect of the game. And just to have that connection and tie has is, is just really been kind of special for me, um, joining the, the group as well. And so, um, but yeah, I mean, Coach Majerus, um, I know he's part of the school up north or whatever and, and their history, but he had a major impact on me. Um, I would go to his camps as well. And then I was only there for that one year, but it happened to be a really great year. And, you know, Coach Majerus and Coach Carl were very, very close. Yeah. And I think that's what helped me in that, that situation as well. And then Coach Pope coming, you know, playing for Coach Carl. It's, it's just a really unique and, and cool connection all around. So you come to BYU and the program goes to the top 20. Congratulations. <laughs> hey, uh, that, that, that has very little to do with me. Nice. <laughs> you know, like I just, I'm just grateful to be here and just trying to fit in. So. What, what surprised you the most in your first year here? Well, I think just going on the Italy-Croatia trip, I was two or three days in. And <laughs> just being uh, just kind of in the coaching world, uh, different places and things like that, one of the biggest things that I noticed pretty quickly was how special the chemistry was, you know, with Coach Pope had set with the staff and then also filtering down to the players, I thought was really, really impressive. Like, I was like, wow, this is, 
this is really cool. You know, this is a really good situation. And then when we were over there playing, um, just making plays for the teammate and things like that was just really impressive. And so I was so new. I was trying to figure every, you know, our players out and all that other stuff. But I just remember thinking, like, wow, like this is – this is a really special combination here that's really hard to find and really hard to cultivate. And so I was like, wow, I, th I think we can do some, some great things here that maybe people didn't expect. Mm -hmm. yeah. A couple of things there. One, I don't know that there is a better way to start a job in any profession <laughs> than, hey, welcome. Uh, you want to go on a European tour? Yeah. <laughs> you got that's, 10 days. That's unbelievable. <laughs> um, joking aside, Number two, you, you and I have talked about the chemistry before a game on the sidelines as guys are warming up, and, and so this is not – I'm not hearing this for the first time from you. But now that chemistry in the locker room is, is being tested for the first time in the face of some adversity, and that adversity is in the first loss. So what does a good locker room and that type of chemistry – how do they benefit um, even when you're facing uh, a, a tough loss like that and you're trying to get better? I think with a great locker room and just a great team environment, adversity strengthens you instead of separating you. And I, I think for us, this has been something that will strengthen us, that will prepare us, not only for our game tonight, but also moving forward. And I think one of the great things about our game against Utah was is that that's a very, I think that's a very big 12 environment and team. I mean, they were the largest, tallest. Right you know, biggest college basketball team, and and the environment was incredible. And so um, I think that's going to, you know, obviously, you know, n you never want to lose a game, and, and it's, it's it stings, especially when it comes from your, your arch rival. But I, I think in hindsight, that's going to really prepare us and really strengthen us in ways that maybe would not have come about if it, if it didn't happen. One thing we don't see all the time is the best player offensively coming off the bench because everyone wants to be in the starting five. They want to have their picture on the curtain and, and all the pomp and circumstance before the game. But Jackson Robinson's just delivered, and Richie Saunders is right behind him. Uh, the bench is scoring 40 points a game. That's second best in the entire country. But what about Robinson? He's starting to get a little buzz now, some traction. And you spend time in the G League and, and, and guys who want to uh, play uh, for a job. Uh, how is, uh, how's Jackson trending what do you think? Yeah, I, I think his skill set fits perfectly at the next level. I mean, the most important thing, especially whether it's the NBA or the G League, is your ability to shoot the ball from three-point range. Yeah. <laughs> Check. Right. That's today's yeah. game. <laughs> and his ability to shoot the ball from three-point range so far this season has just been yeah. off the charts. And so, um, yeah, I think his, I, I, not only just his three-point shooting, I think his defensive, you know, capability and potential really translates in a lot of ways. His ability to pass, make plays. Um, and so, yeah, I've, I've had a, a few NBA friends reach out and, 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 and all that stuff. And, and so I think he's, he's somebody that fits really well at the next level. His ability to come off the bench and be willing to come off the bench speaks a lot about him. Yeah, and, and, and that's the thing, and that's a huge credit to him and, and him, you know, really embracing that opportunity and, and, and things of that nature. But I also think it helps him for the next level yeah. because a lot of guys in the G League feel like they ha in order to get to the NBA, they've got to score a lot of points. And it's really like how can you impact the game um, when you're on the floor because for instance with us in Charlotte like you know I remember the head coach of the Hornets Steve Clifford saying hey I'm I'm not going to take reps away from LaMelo Ball or Gordon Hayward or Terry Rozier so when you're in the game like how are you going to be able to impact it right yeah. and and unless you're you know a lottery pick or something like that in a lot of situations right like even those guys they're probably not going to start from day one so his ability to come into a game at any point, be ready to play, be able to make shots, make plays for his teammates, 
it's going to serve him incredibly well at the, you know, at the next level because mm. that's essential. He's going to have to do the same thing. Yeah, interesting. BYU men's basketball assistant coach Colin Terry is on BYU Sports Nation. Now we turn our attention to the Denver Pioneers, and this is the bounce back opportunity. So, what's the brief scouting report on the Pioneers as you prep for what you hope is win number nine on the season? Yeah, they're a good team. I mean, they've uh, they've been a very high scoring team. They have a very dynamic, uh, high scoring point guard, especially as well, uh, Bruner, number zero, who's able to get his shot off in multiple situations. Um, he can create space off the dribble. He's good at angles. You know, if you go underneath a screen, he's going to look to shoot it from three. Um, and, you know, played really well against Colorado State, who's also ranked in the, in the top 25 team as well. So they've got a, a, a few really good pieces. They have another four-man, uh, number 25. Uh, I, I can't pronounce his last name probably very well. Uh, but he's a good player as well. So, yeah, they've got some some good pieces. They play well together. They're very well coached. Um, they run a bunch of different types of offensive sets and actions, which makes it a little bit more challenging to scout. Uh, so it, it'll be a great test for us tonight and and a, and a great game for us to, to come back and, and really compete in. Coach, congratulations on the fast start, the number 18 national ranking and the great metrics. I know that... You know, those are all just kind of secondary to going out and winning games. But it's certainly fun for the fans uh, yeah, to, to get into for <laughs> sure. And as we close out, I just have to know, because of your backdrop in Utah, who placed the call to you to bring you to BYU? Who was the person to reach out to you? I, I actually reached oh, out. Oh, you reached <laughs> out? <laughs> yeah, so I was actually riding my bike on the bike paths up in Park City because I really enjoy doing that in the summer. And uh, I coached with the past two years with Danielle Marshall, uh -huh. who was uh, a high pick in the draft, had a really good NBA career. Jazz man. Played for the Jazz. Uh, he, he actually told me it was his favorite place to play in the NBA. Really? And he played for, I don't know, seven, eight different teams. And, and we, he and I are very close. We, we became very close. And, and we stay in contact. And I was riding my bike. And I got a random text from Danielle. And he told me that there was a BYU coaching job open so I actually hopped off my bike and immediately called coach Pope and said hey coach like man like I am super interested in the opportunity and I'd love to talk to you about it and I think we probably talked for 10 minutes had a good conversation and you know kind of kept in touch and and thankfully it grew from there and Super excited and grateful to be here. That was a good call to make. Yeah. Nice <laughs> that was good. Outstanding. Colin, great to have you on BYU Sports Nation. Give you some karma for tonight's game against Denver, and uh, look forward to seeing you in the Marriott Center. No, thanks for having me, guys, and what a great show this is. So just happy to be here. Uh, we appreciate the time, man.